Hey everyone, welcome back to video number three on the two bikes that you see here in front of you. I picked up a few weeks ago on the left. The red bike is a 2022 Amigo Rocky 125cc uh, CT70 clone. And the black bike on the right is an Ice Bear Champion 125cc. Uh, it also is a 2022. The Champion is a semi-automatic uh, four-speed, no hand clutch. The Rocky, the red bike, does have a manual four-speed. And in the last video, we uncrated them and put them together. There you can see the there's the crate material leaning up against the rack right there. Uh, we got them uncrated, mostly put together. As you can see, I don't have the front fender on either one of the bikes. Uh, and then we attempted a first start, uh, went pretty well with the Champion, fired right up, you know, put it in gear and just kind of moved it back and forth here. The Rocky, we could not really get to come to even run off of choke enough to even try and ride it. Um, so we're going to have to do a little more work to that one. But uh, I've got $1,400 in the black bike and I've got a little over $2,200, $2,230 if I think if I remember right, you can go back and watch the video and see, um, in the red bike. And as of right now, uh, as I stated at the end of the last video, the, the black bike, the Ice Bear Champion seems to be a tad bit better of a bike, you know, right out of the box. Um, we're going to see, you know, what we can do to kind of even them out here. The Rocky comes with all kinds of emissions stuff. You can see this uh, box thing right here on the side of the carburetor and all these hoses and that little black thing above the exhaust and so forth. But uh, we're going to start this video out just by doing a little comparison So of the two and then we're going to jump into trying to fix the issues that I thought they each had just so that we can get a ride out of them but hopefully by the end of this video uh, the champion's not going to take much the Rocky may take a little bit more but all right real quick comparison uh, start bottom and work our way up they have the exact same tires uh, Chinese brand three three and a half by tens uh, both bikes exact same tires uh, as you can see the Amigo Rocky went the blackout route uh the the fork legs are black the exhaust is black the shocks are black the handlebars are black where the ice bear champion went the traditional you know with the uh painted or silver or chrome versions of the same um as i stated out stated earlier that the amigo rocky is a 125 manual the Ice Bear Champion is a semi-auto. They use very similar, you know, they've got a similar rack. Uh, the headlights are similar. The controls and the, and the mirrors are similar. The carburetors are a little bit different. Looks like the Rocky may have slightly bigger carburetor than what the Ice Bear has. Um... I did notice on this Rocky, that is, I, I really don't like the welds on the top seam of that, that exhaust. I know it's a Chinese bike, Chinese, but, you know, Chinese built, but you, you, come on guys, you got to do better than that. This one doesn't look nearly as bad. Uh, they both got kind of lame looking turn signals. This one's got some saggy ones. This one goes with the clear lens and the colored bulbs. They both read in kilometers. Up to 140 kilometers. And then the bottom row is the miles per hour. I think it's the same for both. And I'm going to guess neither one of them are... Oh, got, shadow, got glares and shadows, sorry. Neither one of them are probably very accurate. I've never found one of those to be accurate yet. They use the same. Um, they use the same air filter housing. The engines, I think, might even be the same brand. 
Lawn Ken or something. I'm not exactly sure what brand engine those are, but they both have a bottom electric start. Similar chain guards, but different shape a little bit. And of course, like I said, the Rocky went with the blacked out. The Champion seems to have much beefier shocks on the rear than the Rocky does. I'm just going, you know, just from looks on the diameter of, you know, how big around the shocks are. Much bigger on the, on the Champion. The back ends look very similar, had the same type of rear fender thing with the three recessed areas and the, and the uh, reflector. The taillights are a little different. At least the fender and everything and the taillight looks squared away on this bike, on the Ice Bear. Now the rack is a little bit off, kind of kicked to the left because I don't have it on there correctly. I, I've got the... Uh, outside here on the outside of the exhaust and it should be on the inside so by the way i have it installed it's kind of got it racked to the left a little bit so that's my fault not theirs but as you can see the seat fender tail light everything looks in line and then you get to this wonky thing and i still haven't got the seat to close if you watch the last video i swear the seat was latched when i got the bike and Everything here, stay open, everything seems to be in the same spot as it was when I got the bike, but I can't get the seat to latch properly. It hits that uh, starter solenoid right here, so we're going to have to see if we can't rework that. Uh, I think the fender is actually bent on this. Look how, look how the tail light and the fender and everything is, is kind of cockeyed to the rack and the seat, so... The clutch on this Rocky, to get it to work, to where it would disengage, I had to ha I have this unthreaded as far, I, I've, it's actually off the threads. And it still is an incredibly short, I mean, it will disengage, but it's still incredibly short throw. I, it, uh, yeah, we, it needs more, another spacer or something in here so that we can get the, uh, adjustment of the clutch right so anyway enough of that very similar uh but yet have their differences so i'm going to bring my table and get it over here and i think the first thing i'm going to do is work on the champion and the only thing i wasn't really happy with is it, it has this little pet cock it actually has two lines that come from the tank to a pet cock and then one line that exits out of the pet cock actually from the top on the and then goes to the carburetor and you can't tell which setting is on and which setting is off Let's see if i can zoom in on that i see it little it's got a little symbol there but the symbol's the same on the top well let's see no you know what now i'm seeing it Huh, okay. See how that, the line is up at the top and the line is at the bottom of it here. So that is on and that is reserved. That's for the bottom part of the tank. I see what they've done now. I didn't see that when I first, huh, interesting. But I still don't like the thing. I think it sits too high and I'm not sure in in the reserve that you're actually getting the uh, all the fuel out of the tank. So we're going to rework this so i think that's the first thing we're going to do all right the last time i was in the shop and we put this bike together uh i didn't put a lot of fuel in it but and i ran it for a little while and it then it tended it acted like it ran out of fuel but it sure didn't seem like we had put we'd run it long enough to run all of the fuel out that i had put in the tank and looking in the tank now i can see fuel so I believe I have the petcock in the reserve setting. Yeah, and I'm not getting anything. Let me make sure you guys where you're looking at here. See, and if I pull the, 
I pull the line off of the car, off of the pet kite, there's nothing coming out. Now, as I lower it, this, it starts to dribble. So I've taken the nut off of this. We're going to lower this and yeah, now we get fuel flow. This pet cock sits way too high. See there, there it's flowing out. So I'm gonna let that drain and we are going to, you know what? I'm gonna shut that off. I would like to figure out which one of these is the on and the uh, the reserve. So anyway, I'm gonna shut you off. I'm gonna plug off the on fuel line and I'm just gonna plug it off and run the reserve line straight to the carburetor and let's see how that does. All right, so I have removed the pet cock and the line to the carburetor. What I believe is the on setting for the tank. I have just used a little piece of quarter inch round bar and plugged plugged that line. So that'll just hopefully just fill with gas and sit there and not leak. All right. The reserve line I have cut, trimmed. I put a uh, an on off on it with a short line that can go to the carburetor like that. So let's put just a little bit of fuel in it and then let's <laughs> test to make sure we do have the right, we do have the right line. Okay, that should be enough. We should get something out of the reserve line, but nothing out of the on line. I'm gonna kind of step in front of you here real quick. Uh, yeah, I believe I still see the on collector sticking up in there. So let's, if we turn this on, we get fuel? We do, okay. Should have put a little spring clip around that, but it'll be all right for right now. All right. I'm gonna put a little more fuel, fuel in it. And I think we're gonna get it down. Make sure it'll start and take it for a little bit of a ride. Give me just a second. That ought to get us around the block or so. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and shut you down. Get the uh, bike down off of the table. Get it outside and we'll see, make sure it'll start and take it for a ride. All right, I don't know how this is gonna work. I've got you on like a little chintzy, uh, you know, mount, handlebar mount. It may vibrate and shake the heck out of you, but let's uh, let's take it around the block. Hopefully the phone doesn't fall out.
I can tell you the uh, speedometer doesn't work where the crap. We had it pegged most of the time. Looks like the idles a little high. I don't have a screwdriver on me, so head back to the shop. That was a uh, successful first ride. I'd say the chain is a little loose. You can hear it kind of pop when you uh, shift gears at certain times. I'm gonna check that swing arm, make sure how tight it is. But overall for a first ride, other than the uh, the speedometer, this just doesn't work at all. Um, yeah, not too bad. Let's see if we can get the Amigo and get it up and go and take it for a ride. All right, so on this Amigo, the first thing I wanna do is figure out how to rearrange this stuff so I can get the seat to close, so I can even ride it in the first place. It, right there, it's not even close to latching. We're probably an inch or better between the, uh, the frame and the cushions on the seat, which are supposed to sit right there. So. You know the the bottom of the seat is hitting this uh starter solenoid so i'm not going to film it but guys i'm going to take uh all this loose this uh the rectifier regulator the cdi this little bracket that's holding the flasher and the solenoid the battery out and i'm going to see if i can't put some of this stuff see what kind of rooms underneath the battery and uh so we can get that seat closed all right, first hurdle has been cleared. Uh, I took all that off, took the battery box out, took, you know, took the battery out, took the battery box out. Uh, there was enough of a cavity underneath all that that I was just able to put the starter solenoid. I did put a longer positive lead on the starter solenoid so that it could reach up to the battery now. Uh, taped it all up really well so there's no you know connections no uh, not grounding out or on anything uh, I put the CDI the flasher the starter solenoid all underneath the battery I left the voltage regulator up here where it went and so now I can put and I adjusted the seat because the post on the seat here on this other side wasn't hitting that rubber grommet but I believe now we at least have a seat that we can close and I feel comfortable sitting on so that, uh, you know, we don't uh, short anything out and do those sorts of things. Now, I'm going to shut you off. I'm going to go to the other side and we're going to take a look at the fuel delivery system on this bike, just like we did the, the Ice Bear. All right, before I change anything, let's just see if it will start today and what, it, what it's doing. Yeah, I cannot get it to run off choke. So it's either getting too much air or not enough fuel. I mean, you take it off the slightest bit of choke. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's frustrating. Very frustrating. I don't have the paperwork yet to title this thing, so I hate going and making too many modifications that would be, you know, hard to reverse. But, you know what? We're going to... We can't even write it the way it is, unfortunately. So we got to dig into it, figure out what in the world's going on. Uh, we seem to have plenty of fuel. I'm still intrigued that this this filter only comes. There's one line that comes down. Off, woo, the exhaust got hot. Uh, there's only one line comes down off that carburetor. We might wind up pulling all of that battery and all that stuff back out of there. Just so I can pull the tank just to see, you know, where the other fuel line is. Is it, is it, is it part of this? I am not really sure. So I'm going to do some digging, see what I can figure out. Well, I was draining the fuel out of this thing and I think, I think I spotted something. So I took that little uh, that little thing right there that was mounted right here off of the battery and had two lines. The the on setting, the on line for the fuel tank went to this little black box. Looks looks sound like sound like a PCV valve of some sort or something in there. So that is the on setting for the tank it went into that little box within then went to one of those lines up into that box and then the other line from oh shoot my tripod turned and then the other line from out of that came and plugged into the carburetor right there okay so I took that little black box off. I plugged up the on setting on the tank, just like I did on the ice bear. And I'm tucking it just down here out of the way. Okay. I was draining the fuel out of the reserve line into my jar. As I was sitting here, look what I see. See how that insulator is way up above the intake? I turned and I looked. Am I seeing an open intake? I gotta get my right in there. Am I just sucking air straight into the intake right there? Is that is that why it won't run but anything on choke? Because it's already sucking so much air. I think so. I don't know if I don't know if this black insulator can be turned upside is you know can be turned around or if that's just too large of an opening for the intake. But I believe we have an open passage. Let me get my screwdriver. I believe that little that's just an open passage right there. So we're gonna have to pull that carburetor and uh, see what we can find. So let me get that yanked off of there. All right, I've got the two bolts pulled out. Let's see if we can get the carburetor out. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Somebody, whoever assembled this bike Put that on upside down. Upside down. Oh man. Wow. Little spot right there. That is casting flaw of some sort. My goodness, fellas. So that was our run issue was right there. But you know what? If somebody wasn't, you know, as mechanically inclined as I am, you know, would have never found that. Then it had to pay somebody to find that. Oh my goodness. Let me uh, put this back together and 
let's you know I'm not going to put that emission stuff back on there that that little box thing over there that we're going to leave that off let's see if we can get this thing to run better you know if we're not going to put all the emission stuff back on it why the hell leave the rest of this on here what is this thing anyway what what's this uh, steel line that bolts here to the head Is that an open passage into the into the head? Do I need to see you cover that back up? I'm gonna turn the I'm gonna try and turn it over with the key. Yeah, it does seem to pump air. It, it, I feel it blowing out. So I feel like maybe I should plug that. All right, let me uh, let me continue to plug away at this. All right, I really didn't want to do any modifications to this bike until we got some test runs. Uh, you know stock out of the box so we could do some testing on you know what improvements we could make and so forth but uh you know with such shoddy work um after i got the intake off look even the gasket that they used where the intake bolts to the head they used the wrong shaped gasket so it half blocks the intake too this is the gasket that goes up between the intake and the carb shape you know see See that shape? I might not be able to hold it. But anyway. Anyway, so I wound up putting just a uh, an intake and a different carburetor on it that I had in stock, a Molk 26 millimeter, I believe it is. Uh, I didn't have a good clean filter, so I've got an old used one on there, so ignore that. And then just ran a, uh, same as I did on the Ice Bear, ran a one single line from the reserve line to the fuel fill. Uh, I went ahead and took this crap off, and it bolted, had a little thing, you know, this bolted to the bottom of the head right here. Well, I, I'm not sure what that is, so I, I just cut off the flange that bolts to the head. I got a gasket here someplace. And I cut a little piece of quarter inch rod to fit in there and I welded it all tight and I'm gonna bolt that rascal back up on there. And we're gonna put gas in it and call it a day. Well, like I say, we put some fuel in it. And see if it runs any better than it did. It has to run at least a little bit better without that massive intake leak that we had going on that'll be enough slow down All right, let that do its thing. Touches the bottom of this 
part of the case right there. Man, look how, look how loose that swing arm is. This thing going to ride like crap. I'm going to mount that uh, handlebar mount to this bike and let's take it for a spin. All right, let's go try this again with the Amigo Rocky. Got some uh, front tire wobble. Okay, so you can actually get it into neutral while it's running. Had a heck of a noise there when we turned. Oops, sorry, hit the horn. It's just that chain hitting that case.
let's wrap this video up to today up for today. So now what are my thoughts at the end of video three? Well, obviously the Amigo was um, hindered a little bit because of some shoddy uh, assembly work from the factory. Uh, so we started off with a bad taste in our mouth on that one. Uh, I like the ride. I mean, it, it uh, going out on it now, obviously with the little bit bigger carburetor and so forth, it ran great. It's geared super low. Um, you know, I ran a, I don't know if you heard me on the video, but I ran out of gear. You know, it needed one more. So we will get into both bikes and check what the stock gearings are. The Ice Bear didn't seem quite as bad as running out of gear. Uh, first gear seemed a little higher, almost more usable. First gear on the Amigo was, was pretty much useless. Um, the Amigo has a really bad swing arm. Uh, Lucy goosey and the chain rattles on that case. Uh, the shifter is way too short. I'm thinking maybe I can lengthen it by taking out that bend, uh, but with these boots on, getting it my toe under it and so forth was just not very comfortable. Uh, they, it also has these serrated uh, uh, foot pegs where the ice bear has the rubber ones. Uh, I don't know which one's better or not, but I just found it harder to shift the Amigo Rocky than I did the Ice Bear. Uh, now, I'm not a, a heel shifter. I'm, a, I'm always a toe shifter up and down. So even that one, I will probably take that shift lever off and get rid of that heel shifter. Um, look at how loose the chain is on that. You can just see it just sway in there. So, and this, the Ice Bear has a squeak in the, in the front. I don't know if it's the brake caliper catching up or something, the Speedo gear or whatever, but front tire has a quick, 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 when you go, you know, down, when, at slow speed, you can hear it. But overall, pretty pleased. I, I would say, you know, today's video, they were pretty equal. Uh, obviously, the, the Rocky got a little bit of an upgrade as far as carburetor, and it's unfortunate we didn't get to test it with the, uh, with the stock one, but uh, once I had jumped into it and taken off some of the stuff to get it, what I felt I needed to do to get it to even run, I didn't want to go back. So anyway, guys, there you go. We'll continue to tinker with these things, continue to play, uh, compare with them. And uh, if you got any questions, hit me up and we'll look at specific things, but I appreciate you following along. Everybody have a great day. Thanks.